In the last video, we started to smooth out and refine the base of the robotic arm. In this video, I'd like to continue doing some of that. So we've already done most everything I'd like to do to this part. What I would like to do is start smoothing out some of the other components. So if we start by doing a loop selection of that loop of edges and selecting these two edges right here. And we bevel them. I use the bevel tool a lot. We should be able to create sort of a rounded base. Once we've done that, I think the best way to quadrangulate this would be to uh, we can leave that like that. And then we can cut these edges right here so that they're also quadrangles. That was easy enough. If we move on to the second arm, now I like the shape of it. You know, I want it to look like a bicep or like a th or like a thigh, sort of look like the larger um, the larger part of a limb. Whereas this final piece is a lot lankier and looks more like a utility. And that's that's what I intended. So I think that we can just smooth this arm out a little bit more and that's really all that would be necessary. One thing we do need to keep in mind with this arm is that it needs to butt right up against this other one. So it needs to be smooth with no extra stuff hanging off the sides. Uh, so let's just go ahead and smooth this one out. We can start out by using that same bevel technique. So I have a shortcut where I hold down the number 5 key and it gives me a rectangular selection. It's not a default shortcut. I've had it there for a while. But it essentially allows me to select things really easily uh, sort of Photoshop or Illustrator style just with the marquee style selection and if I were to bevel these now you can sort of approach something that's more round but here's the problem even though we're gonna approach something that's round we're never actually gonna get there so in this case it may be better to just rebuild this arm um, a few different ways to do that I guess we could we could just use an extrude nerves with a spline. That would probably be the easiest way. But we'd also want to use circles as our source. So we're going to get a circle primitive spline object. Scale it down to a manageable size. And we then want to position them exactly at the pivot point. And the easiest way to do that is with the transfer tool. If you've been following along the videos thus far, you'll you'll be familiar with that. So large arms center is right here. That's where we want our first circle. Small arm center is over there, and that's where we want our second one. So if we copy the circle so we have two, we can um let's see, where's the transfer command? I also have a keyboard shortcut for that. Maybe it's under uh tools. Um Arrange objects, transfer. I have it as the uh, the dash or minus symbol, the negative symbol. So we just move this to large arm, apply, select our other circle, and we move it to small arm. Excellent. So these circles are not going to be at the same place on the x axis because the arm pivots aren't at the same place. But we can fix that by selecting both of them, going to the chord tab and simply entering a value for the X and it'll apply to all selected objects. So we probably want it to be on the zero part of the, uh, on, as a zero value on the X axis for now. And then we go to the side view and just scale it down and that's the size of our, of our circle. And then we can scale this one down too until it's whatever size we want it to be. Now we have our two circles, we need to bridge the gap between them and make this sort of elongated shape. I found the best way to do that is have the uh, circles point at each other. So the Z axis for each circle, let's rotate this one. If, if the Z axis for each circle is pointing at each other, 
it's really simple to convert to an editable object um, and then you basically tell the object not to close the spline you delete that point and you get like a perfect semicircle and that's what I'd like to do but before I can do that the circles need to be pointing directly at each other the easiest way to make two objects point directly at each other in Cinema 4D is with the target tags so we can just say create new target tag one for each circle and circle one has a target of circle circle has a target of circle one they're now pointing at each other perfectly and we can move them around and they'll always point at each other which is nice so now that they're pointing at each other we can delete the target tags it's just a little layout trick and we can now convert them to um, we can make them editable now that they're editable we can combine them into one object so we can just say connect objects plus delete we now have one spline made up of two circles we uncheck close spline and it breaks both splines open and then we delete these extra parts and it goes away we can then select two uh, two different parts of the spline I believe we can actually just say let's see I'm not sure where this is I guess it'll be under tools nope commands um, connect points edges no I forgot where this tool is I've not actually done this since uh, R13 came around I feel like what I want to do is connect the splines together. Here we go. Spline. Mm, join segments. Ta da. Okay. So now we get that top segment. And to get the bottom segment, we can, I think we can see it join segments again. But it would be the same thing as just saying close spline. So let's see. Mesh spline join segment. Doesn't really do anything. But that's okay. We can just go here and say close spline. And it'll complete the last point this is a good thing so now our spline is the exact shape that our robotic arm needs to be now we have a bit of a bulge in the arm so to do that I'll just use the knife tool and make a cut select those two points and just scale them up a little bit and that'll give us that interesting shape that we had before now that we have our spline we can simply create an extrude nerves object I, I held down the option key or the alt key while uh, creating that extrude nerves object and it automatically took my selection made it a child so I believe we need movement on the x-axis to make this happen like that and we can simply go to the extrude nerves position it a little bit better or more appropriately rather and what happens if you scale this? Yep, it scales just fine. So now we have our object. And this time it's a lot more uniform. But it's still still just too much geometry there. So what we can do is select our spline. Let's go to uh, shaded edge mode. We can select our spline and we can change the uh, intermediate points. So if you say no intermediate points, just gonna hide this small arm geom the large arm geometry so if we say uh, no intermediate points every single point on the spline just represents one point along a hard edged polygon if we say natural interpolation I believe it tries to distribute the number of subdivisions evenly between each pre-existing point um, so if you do natural and you say two, uh, there's now two extra edges in between each point. If you say uniform, it actually does something similar, except it actually will try to uniformly space the edges along the object. Think of like tank tracks. And if we say adaptive, it's going to use an angle sort of a sort of a threshold for when it needs to add more points subdivided is I believe a combination of uniform well, no it's a combination of adaptive and natural I think or adaptive and uniform 
Well, we just need adaptive. So we can just increase the angle, the cutoff angle. I usually like, you know, 15 degrees. It usually works for me pretty well. But to match the geometry of its neighbor here, maybe we can increase that to 20 degrees. 21 degrees, maybe? 22. Let's try that. Yeah. It looks like 22 works just fine. All right, so now that we have our arm, we have a couple of choices. We can use the uh, extrude object to apply the bevel, or we can apply it ourselves. Let's try using the extrude object to apply the bevel. I don't do it this way that often. So we have start and end. This is the start, and as you move along the x-axis, that's the end. So right now in the start, we have a cap. If we say none, then we have no cap. We can say uh, fillet or we can say fillet cap. Now we want fillet cap, but notice that it blew our object up. That's because we need to actually tell it to constrain. But if we constrain with too big of a uh, radius, we get problems. So we need to reduce the radius. And what it's actually going to do is increase. It's, it's, it's going to make the object wider. Or if we don't say constrain, it'll make it taller. So you know what? I take it back. Let's, let's just leave it as caps. And let's, let's do this using the polygonal tools. So now that we have our extrude nerves, we can say current state to object. We're not going to need it to be editable. And then we have extrude nerves, cap 1, cap 2. So we need to do a similar thing here, like what we do in Cinema 4D when we have a cylinder, and we convert it to editable objects. We select all three of these objects, and we say connect objects plus delete. This is fine, except it didn't actually weld the objects together. They're still independent pieces. So to fix that, what we can do is select all. We can say optimize. And we can say polygon points, unused points with a tolerance of it looks like is that four thousandths or four millionths? Four ten thousandths of an inch, maybe. I'm not focusing too much on that right now. And we can then select each cap, hold control might be command on the Mac and you click the edge mode and it converts your selection from what you had to what you clicked so we had polygons we clicked edges so now it converted it to an edge selection and uh, now that we've done that we can count how many subdivisions we have here so we actually have one two subdivisions after our extrude inner and all that so we can just replicate that we can just say okay let's do a bevel with two subdivisions and a convex angle well a convex direction and we can say okay so this arm has a bevel radius of about let's say 0.25 inches and we can then select the loop of newly newly created geometry and hold shift and select the other loop of newly created geometry. We can then say remove n-gons. So it creates geometry for all that. And those are all going to be quads because of the the way this object was. Because this was an n-gon cap and because we did a really uh, really simple bevel, uh, didn't create any triangles, which is which is nice. That's cool. Um, so I think we had hidden the large arm, and it looks like the small arm was still a child of large arm null. I'm not really sure why. I don't think we wanted it that way. So if you select large arm and large arm null, the only difference between them is the rotation angle. We may want to synchronize those. So large arm currently has a pitch of 19.706, and if I change this to world coordinates, let's see. 16.762 we probably want to change the large arm null to have the same 16.762 so that they're both at the same angle and we have our extrude actually our extrude nerves has its own angle which is 16.829 that's actually what we want to be using so large arm null is actually going to take 16.829 and then we just move our extrude nerves in we can ungroup the large arm we can you know expand the object group and then delete the original geometry so now we have large arm null an extrude nerves object which should really just be called 
large arm. And it's probably going to be yellow now because it's in the hierarchy. So it looks pretty good. We're starting to uh, develop something that actually looks like a machine. Um, now the fact is there's probably not going to be much machinery inside of this area. I mean on the inside of the arm. So if we wanted to, we could actually sort of make this look a little more stylized. Let me show you what I mean by that. First thing I'd like to do is make sure we're quadrangulating this properly. So these edges look like clever instances of quadrangulation. And if we do that, well, it doesn't quite work out because we, we need a correct number of edges there. So let's deal with that in a bit. What I'd like to do first is get a little creative with this end gone. Currently it's um it's just an end gone. It's got a let's see, it's got a point mode, it's got twenty points, which means I guess it should have nineteen edges. Uh no, twenty edges. Okay, so one point one edge. That makes sense. And uh yeah, so I wanna do an indentation, sort of a uh a concave uh, concave shape into the side of this arm. So way I can do that in C4D is I basically I, I don't want to do it to the other side. I just want to do it to this side that uh, faces the inside of the machine. So what I can do is I can use the knife tool in hole mode. This is pretty cool. I believe this was added in our 10.5 or wow it, it may even have been here since 9.6 version 9.6 but there's a hole mode it's confusing at first because normally in Cinema 4D you can cut along edges with the knife tool. The hole mode only allows you to cut inside of a face. If you try to cut along an edge with this, it doesn't work. So I can start cutting here, and then if I try to cut an edge, it, it doesn't let me click. So you can only cut inside of this hole. So what you can do is create sort of a shape. It's always been hard to find the end of it. There we go. Looks like a... Nope, I lost it. <laughs> okay, so let's try that again. So I'm just going to cut a hole. Looks like I actually want to... Oh yeah, you, you can use the delete key to go back when using the knife tool in Cinema 4D. Nice little trick. So I'm just sort of creating a cutout shape. There we go. And you can see it really just knocks a hole out of the object. And what we're going to want to do now is figure out okay, which which one of these um which ones of these points are vital? Which ones do we actually need and which ones are just extra space? But the general shape I want is something like this. Almost like with car parts, how they, they cut space out of the part to save weight. I like that idea. And so my general idea is we could fill this hole and then extrude it inwards a little bit. And it would just give that part a little bit more depth. Maybe we need to go simpler with it. If we were to, instead of using the knife tool to make a hole, that was a cool trick, but it doesn't really save us much time. We can do an extrude inner and then just start scaling it. So we scale this down, flatten it a bit, and now we have that. So this helps because now we have all quads leading up to this hole, which is nice. Um, but we still have to quadrangulate this thing. Now we have we know this has 20 edges, which means it has an even number of edges, so it should be able to quadrangulate evenly. But the edges are not evenly distributed. For instance, we have an edge here. I need to get out of hole mode. We have an edge here, and we have one here, so on and so forth. We have one right here. But once we get into these caps at the end, it looks like we have nine edges on that cap, and then we have nine edges on that one. So these, we will not be able to quadrangulate these properly unless we make it 10 edges and we can do that by cutting right down the center. Now this has 10 edges. 
Likewise for this guy here, it now has 10. If it's an even number of edges, you can quadrangulate it. If it's not an even number of edges, you're going to have problems with that. So now that we have an even number of edges, we can go right up the middle and connect across. And then we can say, okay, that's a quad, that's a quad, quad, quad. And we just continue making these cuts. That was weird. I want to make that cut again. It looks like I got stuck in the knife tool there for a second. So we have these, and I'm going to do my old brush tool trick where I select all these points. And we can choose the brush tool in smooth mode. We can just sort of smooth them out. Really easy way to uh, make your distribution a little less aggressive and sometimes it'll try to be too overzealous but you can fix that so now that we have this shape uh, we can modify that shape if we wanted to give it more of an organic feel but I like it like this uh, we just want to make sure it's far enough away from the pivots so the idea is that there's going to be a pivot inside of here there's also going to be a pivot inside of there so that's where most of the machinery is going to be we don't want to put this big indentation right where we know there's going to be stuff beneath the surface. So let's move that away. Let's, let's give it a little bit of an irregular look now that I think about it. So we can lower it down to the bottom edge, rotate it a little bit so it's like that. That looks cool. And we can then just select this entire area too much and I think you can hold on control and drag so we move it into itself and we create that cavity uh, now that we have that cavity we can again switch to our uh, our bevel tool and I already know that our bevel tool isn't gonna work on the inside here and I'll show you why but let's bevel the outside um, stick with two two segments for that now notice how the bevel tool gets weird along these uh, sloped edges especially right here here's a little fix for that it seems kind of aggressive as a strategy but check this out if you remove all of these edges the bevel tool will not be able to do that to you anymore so I'm just gonna melt all of those edges looks like I got too many edges there I got a couple of these in there and sometimes it freaks out and it, it triangulates stuff really strangely but here's what you do you recreate some of those edges as perpendicular as you can so, so sorry as tangen tangential as we can so we can see that if we create some of these edges just pointing directly away from the area where the edge came from so just to make my point like the edge came from here let's just make one going all the way to there and if we try to do that bevel again look what happens this time it doesn't feel like it's constrained by those edges that were going off in strange directions and it makes really good looking bevels um, so that's a little trick that I picked up. I just kind of figured it out one day. And so the next step would be to select that loop, remove the end gons, and go back to all of these edges we created and just get rid of them. So we can select this entire polygon, this entire group of polygons. We can melt the edges. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's going to freak out. It's going to cause problems a little bit. Uh, but once you, there we go, once you get it untriangulated, you can actually go back to what you had. And this time you need to help it along. So we know that these two objects have the exact same number of edges. And as we start to add these cuts, it'll naturally re-quadrangulate re itself to the way that it was, hopefully, as we continue to make these cuts. So, 
this geometry was kind of scary like that and that's why it uh that's why it didn't work really well the first time we did the bevel because this geometry is all slanted but the only the only catch to the technique I guess is that you need to you need to actually go back and fix it once you're done but I think it's easier than fixing the bevel so we can I mean if 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 you're if you're really worried about how this looks you can actually come in and triangulate it differently uh that's always a possibility but in this case I was just really concerned about how that lip would look and I feel like we got a good bevel out of it see in this case it made me redo every single cut it's it's not always like that sometimes it just figures out it's like oh yeah I need to retriangulate okay I need to go back to how I was I get it right so I mentioned that the uh, bevel on the inside here isn't gonna work properly the reason I know that is because of this a similar issue to what we just encountered if I try to redo the bevel these polygons are just too small notice this polygon is roughly the same size as one of these bevel segments so we pretty much know it's not gonna work if I try to transform it it folds in on itself and it freaks out now it looks like it didn't freak out as bad as I as badly as I thought it would so we might be able to salvage that but just in case you run into this issue here's how to deal with it you can uh, select all of these polygons that you want to bevel and you just do the bevel normally um, manually so what that means is you you copy the polygons down a little bit and then you scale it so you're probably gonna have to scale it manually like that and then you um, I think you can use the scale tool holding down control and it scales it while copying so you can scale it in like that again and that actually creates the bevel manually you just kind of um, took the transition and made your own now of course it's not going to be perfect because you're just sort of doing it by hand but if you wanted to when you were done you can use the good old brush tool MC and you can just smooth these areas out yourself until you get the uh, until you get the degree of bevel that you were looking for but the initial attempt of the bevel worked pretty well so I'm actually gonna pursue that if we go back to our bevel that I just selected and we say new transform you can see the bevel actually worked alright the only place it messed up was right here and from our last video we know that we can fix this quite easily uh, this is just because some points are overlapping so what we have to do is pull those points out from under each other just like that and then we can select the points and once again using the brush tool smooth those out a little bit you may want to select more neighboring points just to make the transition a little easier just do less and less smoothing every time maybe drop the percentage strength to two percent there you go you don't have to allow it to mess with the boundaries either you can always come back in and tweak those I see what just happened there that's tricky because I didn't remove the end gons from this tweaking the geometry around it made it think oh uh, maybe I shouldn't be that shape anymore see it happened to this nice long one over here too that's a problem that's why I typically try to triangulate those and well quadrangulate those end gons as quickly as I can which I didn't do this time so let's do that so we just say remove end gons and then we can come back to this area and I'll just do it by hand you can just sort of say okay these need to be a little bit more evenly distributed those are kinked I don't know why it's really a lot to ask for an algorithm to say okay make this area smooth no matter what like bevel this so I don't blame Cinema 4D it, it does a really good job most of the time but there's certain situations where you put it into that situation and you say go on do it and it really just doesn't know what to do so I think we're just about done I just want to get rid of this kink 
I want to make that more of a straight shot like that. I think it's more along the lines of what I wanted it to look like. So now we have the uh, base that we worked on in the last video. Uh, this plate that everything's bolted to is a little nicer looking. And this arm on the other side is also tuned a little bit better and it looks more finished. Uh, I did notice that the base extends a little bit further behind this arm than it should. So now that we've got all this stuff done, we can actually come in here and just just tweak the geometry and just say, okay, you should sort of follow the curvature of your neighbor here a little bit more closely. We're not going to mess anything up by doing this unless we move a bunch of these points here that are married to the other parts. But all we did there was made the, f the edges of these two objects flow a little more closely together. So if you were to take the large arm and rotate it, it looks like it belongs. It's all rotating along the same edge, which is nice. So, it's that robotic arm. And, uh, you know, this, this indentation is nice. It, it's one of those details you can add to an object that basically tells a story. It says that, you know, this was engineered, and they said, okay, we need to lose some weight. There's nothing in this part of the arm, so let's just, let's just pucker it in, and, uh, let's just call that, call that an arm. And so I just want to subdivide this part of the arm. Now we know we need to do a straight shot down the center because our investigation showed us that although it has 20 edges, they aren't evenly distributed. So we can just cut there. And we add that extra rail going down the center. And then we can say, okay, those are quads. And those are quads. Do the same thing up here at this end. And I think we're done for this one. The last video is kind of long, so I'm going to try to cut this one short. So, let's create a new material, just sort of a, a gray material for now. Let's put it on the blade. So, I actually just put the material on the instance. What I really want to do is put it on the original object. So if we look at the reference object, the original blade, we have the base and the blade. So let's just apply that to the blade part. Let's leave the base yellow for now. Let's make this a little more white. And we're beginning to get our Razorback arm going. So I hope you enjoyed this one. A lot of nice uh, modeling technique in the last two videos. And if you guys want to see more, let me know. As always, I'm really open to feedback. I like feedback. And this has been really enjoyable. I'll see you guys next time.